Hi, I'm Jason from Better Batteries and I'm here today to talk to you about battery cabling. This is a, a topic that's passionate to our heart. As battery men, cables can often determine the length and, and quality of life that a battery gets. Uh, any imbalance in cabling can introduce issues into a battery and one battery can charge or discharge more than the other and, and create an imbalance in your pack. So cabling is probably one of uh, the most overlooked thing in the land of battery. Most common thing we get asked is cable size. What size cable should I run? Uh, for larger batteries, uh, we like a, a decent size cable. And when I say decent size, I, I often talk in millimetres squared, not one BNS or zero BNS. That tends to be a, a, a size. Um, what we're finding in the modern world, that uh, often a lot of the sizes might be that size cable, but they're double insulated and the actual strands of copper down the middle uh, mightn't be enough to get the current flow through the battery. So we always go for millimetres squared, which gives you a good millimetre surface area of copper for the electrons and the current to flow through. So usually about 50 millimetres squared for your larger batteries, you know, from, from, from around 90 amp hours up. And then obviously you, you come down in size to suit the size of the battery. You obviously wouldn't need to use that size of battery on a 7.2 amp hour battery. The other thing that determines the thickness of the cable is the length of the cable run. So if, uh, if I'm trying to get from the front of a four-wheel drive to the back of a four-wheel drive, you can often get a volt drop or more uh, across the length of the vehicle. So increasing the cable size will help reduce that voltage drop. So, so that's just a little bit on battery cables. I could, you could literally write a book on it. Normally the size is written on the cable or on the packaging, but have a look at your millimetres squared. Uh, for your standard dual battery system under bonnet, I usually recommend about 21 millimetres squared it is, is fine, I'll get, a, get away with it. If you go into the back of the car, maybe think about stepping up to 50 millimetres squared. And if you've, uh, if you've got a fairly decent pack, always use solid link cables. The other thing is the length of the cable is critical. So when you're linking batteries together, whether it be in parallel or in series, and I'll go through that in just a minute, uh, very important that each of the cables in that set are of equal length. Also, also important, equally as important as the cables coming off of the battery pack, whether it be from chargers or in going to inverters or loads. Always try and keep your positive and negative cables of equal length. Even if you've got a loop one or uh, run a little bit further, always try and make sure that you've got balance in those cables because then your electron flow will be balanced to your battery pack. Now let's have a look at the difference between series versus parallel. Two both very common ways of joining batteries and each will give us a very different result. But if I need to increase the voltage of my battery pack, I need to join the batteries in series where I join the positive of one to the negative of the other. That'll join both batteries together and increase the voltage. So in my example here, I've got two 12 volt 100 amp batteries. And by simply connecting the negative of the first battery and the positive, I'll now make a 24 volt, 100 amp battery pack. So again, very important that the leads coming off to the charger or the discharge load are of an equal length. And a really great example of this, where this goes very wrong in, in the real life, is on trucks, where they run a very long positive cable right up to the starter motor and often just join the, the uh, negative cable onto the chassis. You'll always find that that front battery that's joined to the starter motor will die first because there's an imbalance in the electron flow between the two batteries. So again, cabling, cable size, configuration make a difference. So if I now look at parallel, that's where we want to increase the capacity of the battery but not the voltage. So we simply join the two terminals together, we link them. That will become a 12 volt, 200 amp battery pack. Really important here that when we take loads off of this battery, that we take loads not off of one battery or charge one battery, that we take off equally. So we would connect our load in such a manner and take our charge off again so that the electron flow through both batteries. We're not a great fan of paralleling batteries here at Better Batteries. It's a kind of one of our little bugbears and, and, and it's not so much that batteries are parallel, it's more how they're done. Paralleling batteries can, is like filling you know, three buckets. If you do it wrong, each bucket will try and equalise. One battery 
may get an imbalanced charge and, and the others are always trying to catch up. So you often find that one battery in a, in a parallel system will, will fail early. The other thing we often see is, is lots of different variations. Two batteries behind the wheel of a caravan, one in front. So you've got two with a short cable and one with a long cable. Again, that can cause problems. So always try and keep your batteries as close as you can and keep your cable lengths the same. If you've got to put two batteries behind the wheel, try and loop your cable up so at least the cable distance between the, the, the three batteries is, is equal. So, so just on parallel, uh, I might just take a moment to show you how we like paralleling batteries to happen. The most common way is that if I had three batteries, that we just link all the terminals together. The worst thing that you can do is join your loads here. Obviously, we talked about connecting your loads in a balanced manner and your charges in a balanced manner. But even this can cause some, some problems in terms of the way that each battery will receive the, the flow of electrons through it. What we prefer is either to a pin or preferably a, a small bus bar at each end. And then you join again each cable same length to the bus bar. And then your loads obviously to those. You can see automatically that you get a much better flow of current through a battery pack if it's if it's wired correctly. Can be a bit of a job to re retrofit older systems, um, but you'll find that if you can get your cabling right, you'll have a very good long uh, result and life out of your batteries. So thanks for watching.